the three graces of the Dublin musical world. For when I view them in turn, with, whether it be our chief hostess herself, whose good heart, whose too good heart, has become a byword with all who know her, or her sister, who seems to be gifted with perennial youth. Gay fellows, for they are jolly gay fellows, which nobody can deny. The thing that's so interesting about the dead is that on one hand, it's a story in which not so very much happens. And yet, on the other hand, absolutely everything of any importance is represented. There's life and death, there's loss, marriage, love, religion, politics. It's all there in a very, very concentrated form. So that in itself is such an interesting juxtaposition of the utterly normal and the utterly profound, why it's such an enduring classic. Is it snowing again, Mr. Conroy? Yes, Lily, I'm afraid we're in for a night of it. Conroy, you make me sound like some ancient Irish king. I'm Boyd Gaines, and I play Gabriel Conroy. Gabriel Conroy is uh, a teacher, we think, at University College Dublin. My name is Kate Burton and I play Greta Conroy. In the story, myself and my husband come to this wonderful festive holiday party of his aunts Kate and Julia. Gentlemen, Aunt Kate. Um, a, one, a wonderful surprise. I have persuaded my sister to sing. Oh. <laughs> never was more excited about a project. Just the idea of actually coming to a townhouse, a beautiful townhouse on Fifth Avenue, and putting on this great work of Irish literature, and actually having people come, not as an audience, but as guests to a party, and becoming immersed, and becoming a part of the story. They're not just watching people, they're witnessing and living each moment with the actors. I'm Aideen Maloney and I'm playing Molly Ivers. Molly is a, a true blue Irish nationalist and um, is symbolical of uh, the early suffragette movement, the early feminist movement in Ireland as well. Of course I was only joking. A friend of mine showed me a review of Browning. I'm James Russell and I'm playing Freddie Mallins. So Freddie has been coming to the Morkins uh, Feast of the Epiphany for, for years. Over the past few years on, on January 6th that uh, he's become more of a burden uh, with, his, with his drinking. Serious, you might make a worse discovery. Because all I can say is I've never heard her sing half so well. Well the evening is uh, a, a series of misadventures in a way. There is one new participant um, in our evening and that is a tenor called Bartle Darcy and he kind of creates a little hullabaloo wherever he goes in the party, everybody's very interested in him. And uh, finally after exhorting him to sing, he finally does sing sort of when we least expect it and he sings a beautiful song called The Lass of Ockram. She knows the song, but she's not sure where she heard it, although she's feeling that she remembers it from her youth. And from that moment on, a kind of train of events happens where she really suddenly puts together why she knows the song. And it, it sort of triggers a whole series of emotional experiences that she has with her husband. Gabriel has a moment where his wife unveils some secrets that she's harbored in her heart. And he realizes that the woman he's been married to, that he never really knew her. He was very delicate. I can see him so plainly. Such eyes as he had, big, dark eyes. Such an expression in them. He's dead. Captures, I think, familial moments that we all recognize, but, but on a deeper, more existential level, recognizes the presence of death in our everyday lives. Their wayward and flickering existence. 
My own identity is fading out into a gray, impalpable world. The solid world itself, which these dead had one time reared and lived in, is dissolving and dwindling. People come to this gorgeous, gorgeous townhouse and they mingle with the actors, they sit down, eat the same food as the actors, they, uh, they listen to their songs, there's dancing, there's music. It was a perfect fit for the Irish Repertory Theatre. It is profound, it is beautiful, and it lives, and it lives here at the American Irish Historical Society.